Evening, welcome to the Landtimer Stream, folks. Good to have you here. It is 7 p.m. Eastern, and we are ready to do some more studying tonight. Uh, to get ready for that, I've prepared a little bit of agenda. I'm going to talk to you folks about what I'm doing. And a couple of updates here on viral and viral testing, things like that. But uh, this is our agenda, and this is the chat window in case anybody wants to shout out, say hello. Uh, but yeah, time to grind, guys. This is the... Jennifer and I were going to talk a little bit about scrum training. Yes, I post on on um, Twitter. I did get my, uh, I took the exam yesterday, past exam. We got the scrum, certified scrum master uh, certification. Uh, not extremely hard test. You have to take a class and then you have to, which is something that I did as part of my, my work. There's, uh, you know, a lot of changes going on in organizations today. A lot of people are adopting the agile uh, methodologies, including uh, Scrum and Kanban, Kanban, whatever you call it. Um, so, yeah, it, it was important to, as part of my job, but I think it's important for my career, too, because it's it was pretty exciting. I really enjoyed it because, you know, Agile is the way things are transforming. It's really transforming how businesses operate and how IT organizations operate, especially in development, but it's moving into the ops side of the house, right? Uh, DevOps, NetOps um, is a thing. So to see kind of going back to Scrum and Agile, um, you know, methodologies and how a lot of that has come about and what is driving the changes um, was really eye-opening to see. And we, you know, it's being heavily adapted in our, our organization. And uh, we've got some pretty serious Scrum teams uh, working already. It's getting organization wide too. So, uh, great stuff. Uh, I'll put a link down here in the meat chunks if you want to know what Scrum is. You haven't been involved with Scrum yet. Or you, I've heard, I'm sure you've heard of Scrum meetings and things like that. Um, but this will tell you a good bit about it. The Wikipedia article is pretty good uh, from what I can tell uh, and what Scrum is. So, it's sort of changing the way I think about a lot of things and how even I do work. Not just at my job, but in, in my personal life and, you know, rapid iterations, rapid deployment, rapid testing. Um, there's a lot of good principles, I think, there just in general personal organizations. So if you get an opportunity to take training through uh, some employee sponsored thing, I say go for it, volunteer for it, ask for it. Um, and even if not in your personal life, uh, I think it's very valuable. I'm sure there's a lot. Of, I, I don't know what the self-help topics are, reading. I haven't done any of that. Of course, I just sat in a class, uh, an intense uh, class for it. But yeah, there's probably some things out there. And really, you hear a lot in the community uh, when they talk about NetOps and uh, Agile. I don't hear a lot of discussion of Scrum, but generally Scrum is, is kind of an intense, high-intensity, team-oriented um, implementation of agile, you know, philosophy. So it's great. It's really good stuff. And it's been around for a while. That's what I found out. It's actually been around quite a while, especially in software development. So, but great stuff. Um, moving on to networking stuff that's kind of related to networking. Um, but I'm on this thing about viral is expiring now. It may be four days actually now, but not that that's a big deal. I don't have, there's no this one beef I have with viral. When the first year I had it, there was a lower cost to actually renew viral. And at some point that changed. So it actually paid, you know, in other words, it paid for you to not allow your subscription to lapse. That is no longer the case, as far as I know. The quote I had last year to renew was the same price as signing up for the first time, which is unfortunate, I think. Um, anyway, that's their sales deal. You know, that's how they chose to market it. Um, that's on them, right? But I have begun performance testing. In fact, I recently just fired up Viral. I'm going to test Viral first. And there were some changes from Viral 1.3 to 1.5 in terms of 
resource utilization. And, and that is another thing that sort of got me going on testing this because since I upgraded to 1.5, to be honest, and, and I don't know it's, that it's because of the upgrade, but I highly suspect that it is because there really have not been any other changes on my server. But since that upgrade, viral has been running slower. Okay, so that's been sort of another incentive for me. Um, but we're going to see. I'm going to do some very, you know, not very scientific, uh, but my first test today is just basically firing up the viral server, loading the INE basic topology. In other words, this is going to be like initial topology. There's no pr routing protocols running, but it's going to be 10 routers and four iOS VL2 switches all running simultaneously. And with the connections, the links are up. And that's it. No, you know, dynamic routing protocols running it, like I said. And I'm just going to look at the utilization of resources on the system. I'm going to take some snapshots, and then I'm going to shut it down. And I'm going to let it run a little while as well. Not that, yeah, I don't know that that makes any, any difference. I have not really seen performance issues with viral in terms of how long it runs. I have seen performance hits, it's probably memory leaks, whenever you shut down a topology and then load a new topology um, quite a few number of times. Some of you have seen me on this uh, stream. You've seen me lab. I've labbed was like 12 hours in a row in viral without stopping. Um, I may have had to reboot once or twice, but yes, there may be sort of a little bit of a leaking issue. I'm not going to do a lot of testing of that, right? I'm just going to let it run for a while. Make sure there's no degradation performance over time. Um, I will say, if you shut down the viral server and restart it completely, like in in VMware, stop the server, start it up, I've seen significant lag time or issues with viral booting up um, the second or third time. And sometimes I've had to just shut off the machine, reboot my entire server. Uh, at, to iMac. I've had to reboot it entirely to get Viral back to a working, acceptable working performance. Granted, I don't have a lot of RAM in this particular unit. I think I have 16 gig, but which I would love to have more, but I don't. All right, it's a fixed, fixed uh, system that I'm running. But I'm, I'm going to vlog a lot about this later, but I just want to give you an update that I am doing some testing, kind of my methodology. Um, I'm not going to talk a lot about the CPUs in Viral, and I've noted that there. We're not going to discuss that right now. I, I will say, though, that um, the Viral VM, to run a full topology, I have to basically oversubscribe the CPUs, uh, or the topology will not start. Okay. Um, but we'll get into that. Um, more on that later. Next reading study areas. Uh, I've already started reading some last night. I talked about this on BGP. Um, I tell you, you're away from something for a while. Like I haven't really done, I've done some on the job, but I haven't done a lot of intense BGP work in several months. And some of that has leaked out of my brain, I think. Um, and as you get older, your brain tends to leak more. I don't know where it goes, but anyway, I, I found myself having to ramp up again on BGP a little bit before I even study these intense areas. So... That's what happens, and that's why it's so important not to step away for a long time from labbing or studying these protocols, especially if you're trying to attain a specific certification, especially the CCIE, any of the CCIEs, I'm sure. Because if you step away just for a while, like a couple months or three months or six months, and try to come back, you've lost ground, right? Especially the older you get, because you've lost ground, now you've got to sort of ramp back again. Unless, of course, you're using all these protocols in your job, like every day. Um, which I find uh, is, I don't know, probably a lot of people would be using all these protocols every day and could keep them fresh. I highly doubt that. Anyway, um, that's where I'm at. I'm going to continue on. This is going to be a short uh, update tonight, folks. I'm going to get this study right now. Uh, the other meat chunk is there's some more reactions. This is from Ethereal Mind on the Cloudflare 1.1.1.1. Some interesting thoughts on that. I, it, apparently, some people 
in my experience, I've not used this a lot. I have used it in a cut or I have seen it used. I have used it in a couple of instances, but very few. But apparently some people have used this a lot like that in 1.2.3.4. Um, but there's some more thoughts on that. And you really need to be careful just randomly switching there. There are some challenges to uh, is APNIC, I think, opening up these these addresses right and that was some interesting reading that, I, that i'll pass along anyway uh if you enjoy this please uh follow me on twitch um like the video for watching on youtube and check us out down below in in uh, discord especially uh twitter instagram all that good stuff thanks for stopping by hope you get all the good bits in your lab keep studying never stop keep learning and we shall see you back here soon at land tamer stream thanks for stopping by